heck well hello you guys there at home during the lockdown this is the professor pumpernickel second video um it's been quite sunny during the lockdown hasn't it so i thought why not make this video all about light let me take you on a short journey through the history of flash photography Creating our own artificial light has always been one of man's greatest endeavours. Back in the 1820s, we had a huge breakthrough. Brighter than any candle, brighter than any oil lamp, limelight made of calcium oxide or lime. It's heated with a flame made of hydrogen and oxygen, burning at over 2000 degrees. The lime would shine brightly. And today we still use the term for people who are public figures on the stage or on TV. We say that they are in the limelight. A much safer, cheaper and more portable method making artificial light was developed using magnesium ribbon. Well, here you can see that I have an original Kodak magnesium ribbon holder, a genuine artifact from the Victorian period. You can see the wheel there with my thumb would extend a small coil of magnesium ribbon that was held inside of the holder. And when magnesium is burnt, it burns with a bright light. Isn't that beautiful? The photographic process evolved. A quicker and brighter flash was required and so here i have powdered down the magnesium ribbon into a fine fine powder the consistency of flour or talcum powder and we're going to set a flame to this to see how much quicker it burns giving the greater surface area you can see that the magnesium burns quite a bit quicker and a little more violently and in the early days of using this powdered form of magnesium one would have to blow the powder through a candle flame using a special apparatus, using your mouth to blow the powder through the flame. How dangerous is that? Please do not try anything like this at home. Well, eventually along came a much safer method of creating a bright flash, and that was to mix the magnesium powder with a chemical containing lots of oxygen. And you would mix the two powders together in a given ratio and sprinkle the powder onto a flash pan. And that's what you could see me holding at the beginning of this video. Let's take another look at that and we'll see just how dangerous this process of creating a flashlight was, all in the aid of capturing a photograph. So now, how about something you can try at home? This is a kind of photography. It is called the anthotype. Yes, the anthotype. Here's what you need to make your anthotype. Go and collect some leaves. These are just dock leaves found on any old grass verge or garden. You need a sharp pair of scissors and a grown-up to help you with those scissors. You need a food blending machine. Or if you don't have a food blending machine, you can use a pestle and mortar. Water here, we need some water. You also need a strong napkin. This is a dried out baby wipe which I found is really strong and now I have an old paintbrush. Take your leaves and ask one of your grown-up helpers to take the sharp scissors and you're going to chop the leaves up and place them inside of the food blending machine. Next once you have whizzed up your leaves you're going to take a bowl take the dried out baby wipe or strong napkin place it into a smart into a sieve and you're going to strain the juice of the leaves and the water through the napkin and through the sieve into the bowl you might want to take hold of the napkin by each of its four corners and then give it a tight squeeze to bring out the rest of that juice now you are going to take your paintbrush, grab yourselves a piece of paper, you're going to coat all of the paper, and then you're going to let it dry out. 
Once your paper is dried out completely, take an old picture frame and remove the back of the picture frame and take out the picture. You're going to need the glass and the back of the picture frame for this. Oh look, a helper! A honeybee. Alright. He was a honeybee. So here you can see I've arranged some leaves behind the glass on top of the paper and left my anthrotype to develop in the sunshine on the dashboard of my van. Now you need to leave your anthrotype out for at least a full day, if not longer. But that's all about the experimentation. And if you'd like to know more about the anthrotype process, Take a visit to the alternativephotography.com website where you can find out information to create a whole range of different anthrotypes. You don't need to just use leaves, you can use turmeric spice, you can use beetroot juice, you can use flower petals, vegetables, fruit. All kinds of plants have photosensitive chemicals in them which the sunlight will eventually break down. Well, thanks everybody for watching my second video. It's Professor Pumpernickel with Eureka at Halifax. It's still very sunny outside, so I'm going to go and soak up some photons. I'll catch you in the next video next week when we talk all about colour. Because believe it or not, the white light from the sunshine is made up of all the colours in the rainbow and more. So I'll catch you then. Stay safe. And have fun! Goodbye for now!